The cohesive view to think thread, this is the, this thing now, it makes the most sense. Clearly the Holy Spirit needs to be running through all of this, uh, from top to bottom, the same thread through all of it. And so, I think you need to prep with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes people think spontaneity equals Holy Spirit. I don't, that's not true. That's a personal, personal logic characteristic of spontaneity. That's not necessarily the Holy Spirit. Paul didn't just, just like yeah, scribbling yeah. furiously through Philippians with no proofing, no anything. I maybe did, but I bet he you know worked with him. What do I want to say to these people? You know, hello, the people of Philippi. I really love you and care about. You. I think he's thinking that. Like, what do I want to say with him? I don't think it's just spontaneous, spiritually induced haze. And so the same thing. I think it's okay to not just throw a set list together at the last second. Let's think through it. Break out Excel. Sort by song no letter. What songs haven't we done for a while? What is the ma I mean, I think there's a lot of, you pray with God and say, God, would you illuminate what songs we need to be singing this week? What haven't we done for a while? What's not in the bloodstream? Um, Holy Spirit, where do you want to move this week? I think there's a lot of Holy Spirit in the preparation, not in the spontaneity. Not the spontaneity is bad, not that Holy Spirit can't be in the spontaneous. But again, back to God's got of order, I think you prep. And I think there's a whole lot of Holy Spirit going into studying what the songs you're doing. You're, you're really actually engaging the Holy Spirit when you say, what is the best key for this song to facilitate corporate worship? That's a Holy Spirit moment. What are we doing? How do I best engage the people? I know them. So, um, I do think you then plan room for the Holy Spirit. Like you said, you know, we have six songs, six minutes to do a song that's four minutes long. You've planned room for what the Holy Spirit wants to do. I think that's actually one of the best ways to do it is plan for it. Um, not just hope and assume it will take place in some random way and who knows how. Um, uh, planning for spiritual authority. Uh, I think it rec you have to start with recognizing that it's there. Spiritual authority is on the worship leader, then it goes to the pastor, then if someone's doing a prayer time, then it goes back to the worship leader. Just be aware that's happening and that at some point in time you are the, the mouthpiece for what God's doing, where the worship leader is the mouthpiece. And there's authority there and you need to know that. And so you can't just say random stuff. Oh, whatever. You know, you need, I would say, again, back to planning. Think about it. What do I want to say? Uh, we had, we had uh, one of our ladies leading out on a song, and they were introducing it. And when I was talking, I said, you know, you actually have a, a great opportunity. You're going to have spiritual authority right here and right now. You're going to be speaking from your own heart, and you're going to be talking about this song. And then uh, closing out the song, there's like an ad lib to it. Closing, it was, um, I don't know what the song was. Your great name would work, work for this scenario, though. Uh, your name has, you know, there's a whole lot of ad living that you can go on at the end. And I said, let's think of spiritual authority there, though. You're not just saying, ooh, holy God, oh yeah. Um, you can actually use that moment to, to sing over spiritually impactful words. Phrases from scripture, phrases from the song, personal transparent phrases that aren't like personal sharing necessarily, or could be good. But these are phrases that you know God has given to you that have, you know, broken you free from bondage. That's a great time to plan for taking the spiritual authority and then delivering it through words, through lyrics. Um, if I'm speaking, if I'm going to be speaking, you know, pray for the offering or something, how do I actually have, I have authority in that moment, and what am I actually going to do with it? I think if you just think that you have it, you'll then start asking the right questions and use it properly. If you just don't know you have it, you're not going to be doing anything. You're like, whatever, thanks for the offering, let's move on. Um, so, uh, know when the Holy Spirit is working through. There's music, there's lyric, there's prayer quietness, personal talking, all these things, plan for it. It's not just, you know, you on your own. Um, I was going to say manage the changes on a fly. Keep, keep the real goal in sight. You're trying to, produce, you're trying to bring the, the product to people. So if you got to cut out a song, who cares? Not a big deal. Uh, if they can't engage with you for another four minutes because you're already 15 minutes over, then don't make them engage with you because they're not actually going to engage with you anyway. Uh, ways to do it, if you, if you, if pastor runs real long, or like the speaker runs real long, if you gotta do it, maybe only do a chorus. Okay, let's just do the chorus on the song. Or, boy, we got two songs here, let's just do one. Uh, I actually did, this happened, I did a song, prayed for the offering, and then reprised the chorus. And we got it out of there. It actually totally worked just fine. And it actually was the second song of the two songs, it was gonna be a song, offering song, uh, we actually killed off this song, we put this one here, sang it,
credit for offering revamp course, and it worked actually really. It was great. Um, so just things like that of how do you work, you know, yeah. So just the, I think that's the best way of how do I then work within a song to move it around. So or we need to go longer. There's a ministry time afterwards. What do we do here? You should know how to vamp the song out of post message. You know, we're just going to vamp the bridge over and over. Or the first four intro bars, vamp those over and over. Vamp means just doing it over and over. Vamp, I guess, is improvising, is what I think of vamping is. So we need to improvise, but this is the structure for it. And so I'm going to play these four bars with these four chords. The electric can add their color and their flavor with a lyric or, or the lead hook on it. Uh, piano can do that. Uh, but know how to vamp those, so in case you have to fill time with the Holy Spirit's movement, you can do it. So, you take the lead.